The Houting Education Department will use some of its 63.4 billion rand budget to bolster security at schools. MEC Matumechi Rwane says almost 300 schools in the province have been identified as high risk. Let's talk more now with the MEC about that assessment. A very good evening to you, sir. I'm grateful for your time. When you say that these 275 or so schools in Houting are high risk, or high security risk, what do you mean? Uh, good evening and good evening to your viewers. Uh, what we mean is that these are schools, we call them schools at risk, uh, meaning that the environment with which they are located or the area that they are located is those areas where there's a lot of uh, rather a high crime rate and a high gangsterism. And also, we also look at their exposure to pot potential vandalism. Uh, so those are, that's, what, that's how we characterize schools at risk. Mm -hmm. But majority is about the immediate community. And also, from, this is the data we pulled, off, pulled out from a research that we did through our, in our Institute of Mithu Onewe School of Leadership, that these, when they pulled out the data, it was to check on what is the state of those schools generally, uh, the safety of the conduct, is there a in the school, is there a in the immediate community, is there a low police station nearby, etc. So those were the things that we looked at and then we identified them. And once you've identified them, what are the immediate interventions? I know now, for example, the crime wardens recently launched in Houting, I was reading, will now be deployed to some of these areas. But before then, what was actually being done to ensure the protection of both pupils and staff? Uh, we, we launched a safety strategy school safety strategy, which we are implementing currently. Uh, in the strategy, we, we, have, we have set up school safety committees in schools. These committees, amongst other things, is to determine the, the general safety of the school, of all the learners and educators, and also the immediate community. So from the data they give us, then we, we devise a particular, or rather a customized response um, per school. It can be search and seizure, it can be uh, setting up CCTV cameras, and which we've done a pilot of 30 schools, and we found it very effective. We've set it up a, a, a CCTV in 30 schools to, uh, and linked it with the local police and, uh, and, 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 the, and the command centers that, that are there for law enforcement agencies. It was successful. But also we are running uh, preventative programs, uh, awareness. Uh, uh, we take learners to to police, to prisons, et cetera. So it's a comprehensive uh, 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 strategy. It, it covers from search and seizure. If, when we catch them with weapons, we, we embark on a restorative process. Uh, if they are, depending on the type of weapons as well, because these 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 search and seizures also allowed us. Uh, for instance, a school in uh, in the Takani area, we did this search and seizure and we found a a learner with a, with a, with a gun, and uh, we're able to trace the gun to the owner who gave it to the child, mm -hmm. and then as well, we were able to arrest the perpetrator and found that it was linked to other crimes. So the we're doing a lot. That, that highlights, mm -hmm. MEC, pardon me, is that the children have now themselves become criminals because they come from communities, for instance, we've heard this even in the Western Cape when we talk about the gangsterism problem where the gangsters become heroes, some of them, to the communities because when people live in communities where they are poor and only the gangsters seem to be living a good life, quote unquote, those become the role models. So it's a bigger problem than just search and seizures. It requires a holistic change in the community. Yes, no, definitely. Among the things that we were also doing in our school, we're doing uh, this learner profiling so that we are able to see whether they in, beyond the academic, the profiling and of from, for their academic performance, but also we're going beyond to get a sense of the, fem, the background so that we can understand which learner could be mostly be exposed and what kind of intervention can be done. That's when we're able to bring our sister departments, whether it's social development, whether it's health, whether it's safety on board to, to assist the learner. So what is that, that's part of the, the strategy and also the psychosocial services as well we're putting in. We have partners with a couple of, we have partnered rather with a couple of NGOs that work with us whenever we find these learners who are exposed, uh, uh, who are off threat or at risk of being uh, coerced into gangsterism. 
uh, what next? So that's what that's what we're, we are doing within the study. So it's quite comprehensive. Like I said, it's a it's a system-wide problem within the communities and sometimes in the schools as well. Uh, so it's 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 broad. So the strategy needs to be tailored. That's why we're doing. we're tailoring it per school so that we can resolve the problem of that school. Which regions have the worst levels of this behavior? Which school region has the most at-risk schools? Uh, we, we are currently having a problem. Obviously, it's, uh, uh, we're having, currently we're having most problems with the Orange Farm area, uh, that area that side, so it's out, we're having a lot of problems there. Uh, we have a problem with a lot of, uh, what I would say, historically colored communities. Uh, we do have a problem with those schools that side, uh, El Dorado secondary schools, uh, as an example, uh, we do have. So we do have also the inner city, we do have there, and also the other outlying townships, uh, in the township as well, in, uh, in Tswane, we do have. So we do have problems across, uh, rather, let me say. But currently we have a, there's a problem in that area of Jovex, uh, which we are working on uh, full time. I'm sure we'll, we'll, we'll turn it around very quickly in no time. The fact that the crime or the criminal infiltration comes from beyond the gates of the school would likely mm. complicate your efforts, though, because you only have powers over that parameter. You are not in charge of what happens beyond the gate. How much are your colleagues from, for example, the Community Safety and Policing Department going to have to come to the party? No, I fully agree with you there. Um, that's where we're having most problems. Uh, the school, we, we can protect our parameter, but as soon as the child exits the gate, it's a different story. And that's where most of our problems are coming in. However, because I said with 50 committees, we've partnered with the policing forum uh, uh, and, 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 and other, uh, 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 what do you call this? There's these groupings that are forming now in townships uh, to clean up or protect the local communities. Also, they also come on board to assist us. But more importantly, the best strategy is a preventative strategy. And that's where we, uh, we, are, we want to invest in. Uh, let's prevent the child to be, from being exposed, or if they get exposed, not to be coerced into it. And that's the best approach that we want to do. Uh, and that's why we're investing a lot. But we are securing it. Uh, our parameters, we are securing it, we are tightening it. So that the, it's, it's understood that the school is an area for learning and development and nothing else. And that's what, that's what we do. That's what we want to do, rather. Okay. Holding Education, MEC. Matumichilwan, good to speak to you. Thank you.